Hello, my loyal listeners. This is your evil black money speaking, coming to you with another installment of Pasta Bites. It certainly has been a while, hasn't it? I have missed this. I have a quick announcement to make. A few months ago, I had a copyright strike on my channel that didn't exactly allow me to post anything over 15 minutes in length. However, ladies and gentlemen, the ban is lifted, I've had some booze, and I am back in the fucking saddle. So then, with all that out of the way, sit back, relax, turn off the lights, and ignore the biting at your ankles. They just want to play. My hand brushes her cheek, and the skin turns papery, peeling and flaking off of the muscle below. Her smile doesn't change, the look of adoration in her eyes. I brush again, with the back of my hand, and muscle peels off to reveal bone. Stepping back to free myself of her embrace is accompanied by the crack of bone. She still smiles and reaches for me with one hand ruined torn and shattered. The wall is at my back, and I feel her lips bleed as she kisses me. Her heart is beating for me, and I steal the breath from her lungs. You stop, finally. Stop running, stop screaming, even stop panicking. You look behind you, peering into the darkness, and see nothing. The shape is gone, and the echoes of your screams have died away. Slowly, you can feel your heartbeat returning to normal, and even the darkness doesn't seem too dark anymore, as your fear fades. The sound of a door catches your attention, and you look around, having to look down to see the wedge of light. You look down at yourself, looking up. And then you panic, and scream, and run from yourself, while you watch. I can't get it to shut up. It's been clawing for ages now, the little bastard. I thought I killed it. I can remember the blood, the guts, and innards of that poor infant. It's not my fault. I want to dissect the little bitch, always crying, and his parents... <laughs> oh, I still remember their screams and pleads. Oh, their pleads were the most relishing of all. <laughs> but what's it still doing scratching on the walls? Oh, no. I always smell coffee in the morning. It always comes from Dad's apartment, usually joined by the smell of peppers and onions. It was nice to smell on the weekend. A signal that it was time to go downstairs and talk to Dad about life. We usually joked around, watched NASCAR, and just relaxed. Dad would smoke, and later I would have to wash the smell out, but I didn't mind. It's been a year since I spoke to Dad. I keep smelling his cooking. But I found him last year. Ice cold dead. You know, I always knew I was bad. I never really go out of my way to hurt people, but... I don't really care what happens to them, either. I do, however, care what they think of me. Especially looks. If I don't spend 30 minutes getting myself in pristine dishin every morning, then why bother heading out? Now, naturally, when I woke up with a splitting headache, it was one thing. The twin mountains of pus on my forehead were another. They were horribly tender to the touch, the size and shape of a corn kernel. After careful prodding, I felt something hard under the large, greenish pustule. Several minutes of scrubbing and squeezing until the pus and blood was cleared, and I found something. Tiny, bone-white horns, maybe a quarter inch long, and sitting directly above my eyebrows. 
I always knew I was bad. I... I just never knew how bad. I have to continue driving on this one-way road. No idea where I'm going anymore. I filled up on gas station pizza and headed on out for my road trip to Vegas. I glanced back at the road behind me. Then back ahead. It's been hours and I need to find another rest stop. I don't know what's going to happen first. My truck running out of gas? Or the man that snuck into my back seat during my pit stop, slitting my throat? I've often been awoken by my dog, pressing her nose to my cheek. I can fondly remember her big, clumsy paws batting at my chest, and the slow, dopey thump of her big Newfoundland tail on my comforter. That was my morning routine for years and years until... This morning, I lay, feigning sleep, and trying to stay calm as I feel a wet nose to my cheek, and a big, clumsy paw on my chest. The problem is that my sweet, dopey dog passed away last night, and her body was left with the vet for cremation. I don't want to know what's thumping my bed. There once was a fine little lass, who lay on her back in the grass. She had mounds of red curls and wore tiny pearls with one hell of a fine ass. She was my one finest friend, and for me today she did bend. And she'd never complain of the way I did strain every single hole she did lend. We lay under the setting sun, once our most wonderful fucking was done. Most girls are okay for some fun any day, but dead women don't try to run. I like your teeth. You keep them so pretty. I watch you floss them from the other side of the glass. I grin with my gums as you brush them to gleam in the sunshine. Do you know how lucky you are? All those braces and dentists to help you get the perfect set of pearly whites. Like porcelain, china, ivory, bones, pearls. I want them. I want them for my ruined mouth. I want your teeth. Your pretty teeth that I see every time you talk, smile, laugh, or yawn. I want them for me. I want to see how lovely they are inside. I want to delve my tongue into each one after I've ripped them from your mouth. Christianity has taught people for centuries that angels are not more than lovely humans with wings. Truth is, those depictions are merely artistic license. Real angels look like four-headed beasts that scream. Multi-winged monsters made out of holy fire and multi-eyed wheels within wheels within wheels. They are the heralds of the Lord, thy God and his only Son. But that's not why the world is in a frenzy. They are frenzied. Because these terrifying beasts have arrived from heaven once more. They have come back, but they are not here for us. They have returned, and they want their planet back. <laughs> All right. I think that's enough for tonight. Oh, it is good to be back in the saddle. I've said that already, haven't I? Well, anyway, thank you all for tuning in to this installment of Pasta Bites. If you have a pasta bite that you would like to submit, make sure that it's between 75 and 125 words and submit it to the Tumblr link down below. You can submit it anonymously if you like, or if you don't have a Tumblr account, you can tell me what pen name you would like added to your Tiny Tales of Terror. Remember, I need ten of these wonderful little stories in order to do the next installment. So get cracking. Thank you all for tuning in, and please, try to remember. They just want to play. <laughs>